What's up, George? You're there. Huh? I didn't know you were there. <laughs> well, you what quit you corporate a year ago. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Doesn't seem like that long. Yeah. Seems like I was just on my two week vacation. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're officially year long jobless losers. What do you think? Crazy. I'm excited. It's gonna be I don't fun. Know what to think <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. But it's gonna be fun. What's the best part? Be my own boss. And my boss. Not dealing with corporate turds. <laughs> <laughs> is that appropriate? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, not everybody is that way, obviously, but you always got the lemon in mm -hmm. there that ruins it for everybody. Where are you seeding? Arugula and kale mix. <laughs> Y'all can see these trees here in the front and where they put shade in that pot. Um, it's really not that big of a deal. We're gonna go through and prune those eventually and uh, I'll be sure to record it, but it's all, it'll be all um, thinning trees and uh, certain cuts and stuff. Yeah, then we'll reduce some of the, it's really just the density of the shade, but we really want that shade in the summer for the summer greens. It's gonna make a big difference. So here is the future onion plot. It'll be like the onion plot we did last year. All right, it's looking like one truck bed is about one bed. So uh, Sandy and Ben, are, they wanna help. So um, Sandy just got here and Ben's gonna be here soon. And then Tori's setting up the curing in the nursery tunnel and get this thing done. We ran out of space in the basement, so this was my idea for to set them up out here. Um, the canopy tent with shade cloth over the back, and it's on the trailer. So if it does rain, um, you can move this by hand, and I'll just put it in the garage out of the rain, and that should be good. But that was in a different place, so this is how we mix in crop rotation. We're going from carrots. This was all carrots. Now it's going to be all onions, and then. When we harvest the onions around summer solstice, July 4th, uh, we'll replant this. Those onions are coming this week. So yeah, amendments, BCS, do what we can. And then later this week, we'll start harvesting out the rest of the carrots. George. What's better, acting rich and keeping up with the Joneses or growing vegetables? <laughs> growing vegetables, the show. All right, George, since you have a master's in accounting, what's the best way people can leave the rat race? Uh, Dave Ramsey's a good one. I'm like a huge fan of his, obviously, just cause it actually makes sense and it actually works. Obviously you can do your own way on it, but that's probably like the easiest way to, or like steps you can follow. Yeah. But this morning, I saw um, one of my master sergeants from the unit it was in debt, and she paid her debt off today. Nice. Just following Dave Ramsey. Dave, following Dave Ramsey. That's awesome. So that's pretty cool. Nothing better than being debt free. But we still have. It's very free. We still have the house and the land. Yeah, but no credit card debt. No, no business debt. That's the big thing. Debt. Yeah, no business debt. Frees you up for a lot of things. Um, and you teach you how to what? Amend and refresher on the BCS. <laughs> you gotta run the BCS now? Yeah, if you're gonna go help Doug, I got stuff to do. Well, if you run the BCS, I literally do nothing out here. <laughs> no. Other than be cute. Oh! Which I don't think has been amended yet. No. And the ones in plot two need amended. And plot five. All right, George, you running the BCS? Sure. We've been interplanting radish with like everything and bunching All the onions. Longer term stuff. Yeah, it works pretty well. Yeah. So you have beets that grow really slow and the radishes that grow really fast. So from the same bed, it's three rows of beets and then a row of radish in between. It's pretty rad. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So... Yeah, you just start it and then use it. That's how it works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A lot of compression on this engine, so when you pull this, don't hold on tight, but pull really hard. Because sometimes it will yank back and yank your arm hard. Okay. Am I not pulling hard enough? Oh, rule number one with the BCS. It's gotta be on. Oh. <laughs> okay. You're just trying to make me look bad. When it starts, put, your, uh, put the choke off. Oh. Try now. Pull this one up. Here. Why does it sound like it was doing anything? Because you don't have the throttle up. Oh. Here. Uh. Oh, okay. So a lot of people will put strings up on their bed and run the BCS with the strings to keep it in line. Uh, I don't. Um, I've been running equipment since I was like 17 and that was my job in the military too, so heavy equipment. So um, yeah, it's, I, I don't know, it's like, yeah, it's pretty simple. You just have to get used to it. It's, it's kind of a big machine for shorter people too. And I'm like a foot taller than Tori, so. I started going through all those emails that Casey mentioned from last week and um, I really just skimmed over them because a lot of them were asking a lot of the same questions so I'll just answer them here on the video and if I didn't answer or if I don't answer your question now um, just email again it's going to the right place now so um, I'll definitely get it in the right place but the main question that people are asking are where we get our tunnels so we get them from Farmer's Friend, LLC, and um, all the links to all the tools that we use. So the tunnels, greens harvester, silage tarps, um, weed mat, and some other tools uh, from Farmer's Friend. Those are all in the links. Um, we have links to Haas tools with the double and single wheel hoe. Um, they also sell seeds. Another question was if um, we allow visitors on the farm and if we allow volunteers so right now we're not doing any volunteers but our farm is open every Friday from 3 to 6 so you can come visit during that time if you're interested uh, another question that I got a lot was about people wanting to start their own farms and how they should get started so there's also a link in the description to our Amazon um, bookstore for a lot of the books that really inspired us us to like start this and make a living from it there's financial information in those books um, there's jang rollers that you use with certain seeds there's everything between seed density spacing all that stuff so um, check out those books oh and a last major one was how we manage pests on the farm so um, I know we've mentioned it before, but like we use the Johnny's insect netting and then we'll use beneficial insect releases. So we'll release green lace wings and ladybugs. Um, and then we also do spray BT, but just as a last resort and that is within our CNG certification. So hopefully that helps you guys. Like I said, if I didn't answer your question, um, just shoot me an email again and I'll answer it this time. All right, Tori's seed and spinach over here. And what we did with the seeds before we uh, put them in the cedar was soaked them with water and this new product that got sent to me, so it's a prebiotic. So it's full of beneficial bacteria. The idea is that they're right around on the seed coat and everything, so when you seed it and it germinates, um, it's gonna have that much more life there and every and the bacteria should help the native bacteria Process the things in the soil so they get nutrients faster So if that works out pretty good and you can and we're able to see a difference then um, I'll let you guys know about that product and uh, 
I'm not sure if it's available just yet. Um, I got like a sample bottle thing, so I don't know. I'll, but I'll let you guys know. Super busy day, guys. So all of plot 10 is now planted thanks to Jenny, Lula, and Sandy. And the tarp over here with the white side up is for the kale and spinach that we seeded yesterday. For most of the rest of the farm, Emma, Adrian, and I um, cultivated everything. So got the row cover off, let everything breathe, um, take the weeds out because there's a lot that grew there over the winter. Kind of when it comes to winter, we just kind of row cover it and forget it. And then um, check on it occasionally and harvest it when it's ready and then you have to do the spring bed prep anyway, so we just kind of cultivate the weeds and do it that way. Apologize for not getting the camera out much, but it was dry today, it was sunny, and just an awesome day to cultivate and expose those roots to no moisture and a little bit of wind and then a random dust devil that took a piece of row cover from here up into the air and onto the power lines. So that's uh, that's a first for us. We've had 60 to 70, maybe more mile per hour winds come through here and never have lost a row cover like that or a salvage tarp or a tunnel. There's another row cover like 600 feet in the air. Just, I mean, it was like, it was like spiraling up into the air. It's just a dust devil thing, I guess. I don't know. That's, it was crazy. So the power company had to come and take it down. So, uh, so 40% of all the days of our winter had rain. It was way more cloudy than what we've experienced living here in North Carolina, and it was colder than normal for us. So it becomes a pretty unique balance when you have so much to plant and prep, and then you still have to harvest. Um, if you were just doing things seasonally, you would have all this time to prep and plant, and then um, you wouldn't be harvesting and stuff to go to the market. So. Uh, the challenge for us when we grow year round is this time of year is like double everything. So all the help today is greatly appreciated and they know what they're doing. So it was, it was amazing just to get all that work done and get it done efficiently and know that it's done correct. Get some more seeds started here. Hey. What are we doing today? Uh, we're getting 5,000 onions later. So I'm gonna try and harvest as much as I can before that happens. Last night was the first night since probably November that we could leave all the tunnels open. So it was really cool to do that. Everything's looking pretty good. And it really feels like spring is gonna be in the 70s today. And yeah, so busy day. Um, our spring has like really officially started. And uh, so I'll try and take some cool video here. this new sticker here for the cooler that's pretty fitting. <clears throat> Might be wondering what we have to harvest in March. Um, so radish, 
some cabbages. Uh, those are kaleettes and kale. Uh, kale and also there's Swiss chard back there. And that is celery. There's some kohlrabi. There's some carrots. So we had to start those, uh, most of them in the fall, and then some of them we planted uh, basically in the middle of the winter. And in our climate, um, zone seven, we're in uh, Western North Carolina, like the foothills, Piedmont region, not the mountains and not the Piedmont or the beach. It's kind of a unique area. Tons of challenges come with growing those vegetables over the winter to have them available now. Number one thing for us is too much moisture, fungal pressure, a lot of aphids. Uh, you don't know how cold it's going to be. One night was 16 and then, you know, we have days in the 70s randomly. So that change in temperature and also the daylight. So for a good month or so, plants don't grow at all. So basically the entire farm was planted to get to that point so that we'd have stuff to harvest through that, that lull period where nothing really grew. So tomorrow we'll finish the harvest like the other things like the greens, the salad greens, the arugula, the spinach, the baby kale mix, uh, some more carrots, the beets, and the microgreens, the bunching onions, the collards, the fennel, and then the Asian greens like tatsoi and pak choy. Got our onions from Dixondale. 5,000 of them. <laughs> know any good onion puns? Just punion. So these are sets. We don't start them from seed. We don't have the space to start this many. The majority of these are going to the restaurant and they don't care. They just want local onions. So uh, this is reliable and they're better at starting their onions than we are. Like we'd have to have like seven basements to start this. Yeah, that's a lot. So, or build an entire another tunnel that you would have to heat and pay a bunch of money to do. It's just, it just doesn't make any sense. We're just gonna set these guys in the cooler for now. And uh, so you're supposed to spread these out, but we're gonna be planting them soon. And then you're not supposed to get these wet, you're supposed to leave them dry. But before we plant them, we're gonna dip these in a solution so the roots um, can get inoculated with stuff and have it be right in the hole where we plant. We had like a record fast uh, wash and pack day today, so. So the bag greens. We got the arugula and their spinach salad, mustard greens, baby kale, uh, regular kale. Yeah, chard, a whole bunch of stuff. So we planted the onions too, and I'm getting ready to foliar for them. So micro mix. This is endomycorrhizae and uh, seaweed. So they all have mixing instructions on their bottles and I'm gonna mix them in the backpack sprayer and spray them on the onions. Yeah, this is the backpack sprayer, it's what you use for all the foliar fruits. Um, and adding like the nematophagous fungi and um, beneficial nematodes. So it's a two gallon tank. It's everything mixed together. And then um, yeah, there's always, there's application rates and everything, so. Okay, I ran this, the irrigation for an hour, and um, now it's just a matter of And then when this is all completed, I'll turn the irrigation back on. We really want this stuff to get in the soil. The onions are just about done curing here. You can see uh, what it looks like. And the bulb is really hard. So uh, yeah, these are on our market tables, which we have to load tomorrow morning. So we have to do something with all of these still today. Yeah, there's some real nice ones in here. Probably cut up a good bit of these and load them for the market tomorrow. And then the other ones, um, let to find room in the basement or the root cellar or something. Maybe put them on those tables since we don't have microgreens on them right now. I have no idea. Okay, it's all on there. 
uh, and turn the water back on and yeah that really helps the plants get established and um, the microbes in there will help break down the amendments and so when I was talking about dipping the stuff all you do is just dip the um, onion the roots in the solution with the whatever you're gonna put in there and then plant it so we dip like a whole bundle at a time and then pull them out and um, set them where the holes are at to plant and it's pretty simple okay guys sorry for the lack of video at the end uh, it's been a really packed week uh, with everything and uh, and we had, so we had the market Saturday, they went good. We spent today at our friend's house in South Carolina. And so it's, it's Jeremy and Kate, but uh, Jeremy's an electrician and um, we're trading work now. So he's gonna do some electrical work here. And then I did some tree work there. So the whole day today was spent doing tree work. And uh, yeah, just friends helping friends out. So we stayed there at the job took longer than I thought. But yeah, so many things are rolling right now and happening. Like this week was a lot of time spent with uh, Janie, Leela, and Emma work, uh, getting things worked out and figured out into a rhythm. And then uh, DJ and Tara are moving in over there, getting all that stuff figured out. So uh, all the birds are good that I showed in the last video. And I'm pretty sure next week they're gonna be moved out to the grass. So I'll be sure to show you guys that. So. So my plan is to show uh, what we do here, plus what is going on at DJ and Terrace. So it's like the vegetable part plus the pasture poultry part. I've had a lot of comments about how we're gonna work together. Um, we have a lot of ideas on how we're gonna work together. Uh, we think they're good. We've thought through them a lot, a lot of conversations. Uh, I'm just saying I'm not gonna put them out now because we've kind of already been copied once. I don't want to be copied again. And yeah, and we have a ton of stuff to bring to real life, to get rolling, to actually, um, to actually talk about it. We're not, we're not people who talk about stuff and then don't do it. We're doers. We're not talkers. All four of us. So that's the reality. That's the reality. That's the the. That's what it takes to make it work. And so yeah, when it happens, I'll be sure to share it. But there's so much stuff we have to build to that point um, in a short amount of time to make it happen. But but definitely appreciate the support from y'all. I really appreciate um, everybody's thoughts uh, toward my dad. Uh, that's, you know, that's a whole nother thing. So um, thanks. Uh, I'm not gonna go respond to all the comments. I don't wanna, you know, have to think through all that stuff like again, but, but it is appreciated so um, uh, for from everyone in my family everybody appreciates it uh, but yeah guys so next week is gonna be a lot like this week a lot of planting a lot of bed prep a lot of stuff we got the turmeric from turmeric Todd uh, we bought 50 pounds so it should be going here and we're gonna take the collards out and um, I asked Todd how we managed the plants for the last five years which he managed in the Charlotte region so those five years gave the mother plants that we bought um, so if you plant like a thing of turmeric like this, you're not going to get a good harvest from it. These are mother plants. I'll just show you guys. You excited for the turmeric? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Alright, so these are the mother plants. And this is kind of what, you know, a piece of turmeric you would plant. Uh, I think this is its second year. I mean, that's not going to produce much compared to this. You can see that. So we made an extra investment to get a larger harvest this year, which should cover the cost of all these. And thanks to Turmeric Todd for growing good plants and all the information. So we'll plant it up to here and then the turmeric will actually grow down this way into the soil. So it'll be like a shoot off of the root. And yeah, these are real stout plants. But so uh, we were gonna do it in a tunnel, but the way we're set up right now it just didn't really work that way so but we still think we can get a harvest this year but I'll explain all that next week but yeah these are it it's a big pretty big tree pot there so from the amendments to the irrigation to 
the harvest and all that stuff it's going to take like really the entire season to grow but this food if you look up so if you look up turmeric and the health benefits it's literally medicine and we eat a lot of it that we buy from todd and it's just awesome so we're really excited to grow this stuff so the other thing carrots are popping in plot 10 everything's growing really well and yeah we just need the tunnels and we're set up to build the tunnels it's ready to go all right guys thanks for watching this video and yeah so much stuff to cover um we're the season's just starting and we're just being able to put our feet down i guess and then yeah it's, it's, it should be a really good season